welcome to lesson 4 in our training module, My Eco Footprint. I'm sure that by now you have a deep understanding of the importance of ecological footprinting and an understanding of the methodologies that have been used in creating the calculator we are going to use today. By the end of today's lesson, you will know exactly how an eco footprint is calculated, as well as how many planets it takes to support your lifestyle. The science behind footprinting is continually developing, and countries around the world are starting to gather facts to enable scientists to provide data to be included in future versions of the calculator. Australia is way ahead on fact gathering, so we are going to use this country in our first example to show you what the calculator is capable of. Are you ready? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to the EcoAnalyst's Ecological Calculator. The calculator that we're going to use can be found on www.footprintnetwork.org. Now they're the most comprehensive website as far as eco footprinting goes that I've managed to find. As you can see they've added a few new countries because they've collected the data from these countries to enable the calculation to work and other countries will be coming soon. Now even though I'm in South Africa I've selected Australia because I wanted to show you how good this this eco footprinting tool actually is. It's got a very good graphic user interface and on South Africa it's not so good yet because they haven't got all the data as much as they've got in Australia. So we're going to select begin to see um, how big our ecological footprint is. Right, you, if you've done it already then you can just type in your email and your password and you can log in but I've cleared the database so it doesn't know that I've already got one so I'm just going to click get started and I want you to do the same as a new user. So we click get started and now we're going to select an avatar and an avatar is basically a representation of yourself. So you choose whether you're a male or a female. It's the first choice. So I'm a male, so I choose a male. Then my hair color brown, my skin color tan. I'm going to put on a green shirt and a sort of like green beige pair of trousers. And I'll select my hairstyle. It's about that one. My hair's not too long. Oh, it's not as spiky as the one next to that. And when we finish choosing, we click on OK. Now, I fast forwarded this screen a little bit so we don't have to wait for the whole quiz to load. You can see now it's loaded. What happens now is this is a, a picture depicting Australia in the city. And then you can see there's me. There's my little avatar walking around. And this is where my house is going to go. We start now, you can either enter basic information on your food, that's the first one we're going to do, basic information, just faster answers, or we're going to enter the detailed information, more accurate answers. So the top one above the green line is the basic information. I want you to please do the detailed information with me. The basic information just means it's not going to be as accurate a representation of your ecological footprint. The more detailed information you give, the more precise your results will be. Now, first I'm going to select the beef and the lamb, and as you can see, as you increase it, the image increases as well. So I'm going to say once or twice a week for beef and lamb, and then Poultry, you can see the chicken bone getting bigger, the drumstick getting bigger and bigger every time you change it. So this is how the system works. You just have a sliding bar, and I want you to choose your, your, all your different meats on the screen. So I'm setting mine for beef and lamb once or twice a week, poultry once or twice a week, pork only once every few weeks, and fish every few weeks. And then when we say, okay, now you can see what's happened is the meat market has appeared on our screen. The next one about your food is how much of the food you eat is processed or packaged and not locally grown. Again, I'm going to enter the detailed information. The first one being the farmer's market friend. Now you can see the tree increases 
and how much of the food you eat is grown locally? About one quarter. I'm just putting in estimates here. I'm not putting in exact information. I'm just showing you all the different ways in which this um, computer program responds to the different choices that you make. The next one after you've done your food is your home. Now again, I'm going to enter the detailed information. How much, how much rubbish do you generate? And how much new furniture do you buy? I'm going to say, let's have a look, maybe some bedding I haven't decorated in years. No, that's not correct. A new lamp or table just to spruce things up in years. I'll say I haven't decorated in years. Let's select that one. Now we're still on the home. This is now about the household appliances. How often do you replace appliances? So let's say almost never. And how often do you buy home entertainment and computers and electro electronical gadgets? So we'll leave that at that one. This is still your home. It's now how often you buy news books, new books, magazines and newspapers. So we'll just say occasionally because I buy quite a lot of ecological magazines these days. Um, and then we'll select next. We're still on your home and now it's how much of the plastic waste do you recycle? And we can say often because I recycle all my plastic waste. Plastic waste. Okay, you see the bin up here? Okay. Now, which type of home selects, uh, which type of home do you live in? I live in a freestanding house with running water. You can see the different images for the different accommodation that you live in. So I will select freestanding house with running water and click OK to continue. And voila, there is my house. Now, I do have electricity in my home, so when I select yes, you will see that the electrical pylons will appear. There is the electricity delivered to my house. How many people live in your household? Now, these include children, so I'm going to select two people that live in my house and click OK to continue. Now, which region of Australia? This is all specific to the energy requirements, the waste recycling, all things like that. How much renewable energy is used? So we'll just put in one, we'll just select any state. We're still on your home. Now we're going to say in the detailed information that I, my house is made of a, a double clay brick and very little of my home's electricity comes from renewable resources here in South Africa. So, but I'm just going to put that there. In Australia, they're a bit more behind ele um, electricity and renewable energy. We're still on your home. How do we cool our house and how do we heat our house? Let's have a look at the different selections over here. I use limited air conditioning only on very hot days. We'll leave it at that. And how do you heat your house? I use a heater when I need to use a heater. And then we click OK. This is for the energy saving light fixtures. Now I haven't replaced all my energy, but um, I can select many because most of my most of my um, house, well about half of my house, so let's say about half the house. Now how often do I use a bicycle? Well I have a bicycle and I'll say I'll use it occasionally. So there is my bicycle next to my garage. How far do I travel by car each week? Let's say about 270 to 410 is realistic. And my motorbike, let's see how much I use my motorbike. Let's just say 45 to 115 kilometers. Now, this is the type of car that you drive. So how many, how many liters does your car use per hundred? We will say six to 10 liters per hundred and then my motorbike. So my motorbike is a small motorbike, so I'll use 3 to 4.5 liters. And there appears my car, and I would hope my motorbike's in the garage. This is now about public transport. In Australia, they're very big on public transport. So we can select with the bus, if you had to go to work and back with the bus, and then with the train, let's just, for interest sake, select 25 to 100 kilometers on both. You see there, the bus arrives, and how often do I fly each year? Let's have a look. Let's say 10 to 25 hours. And now you'll see an aeroplane come flying through the sky. There we go. There's the aeroplane. 
how often do you drive with somebody else? Because then you can split the efficiency of the fuel between two people. Okay. And that is the ecological footprint. Now you can see that I, you, if everyone lived like me, we would need 3.7 planet Earths. We would need 6.7 global hectares. And there it's divided up into the energy land. It's a lot for electricity, you can see. Because I use so much electricity for my house to heat it and to cool it and things like that, you can see my electricity is, co is quite high. There's a little help on all of them. You can click the question mark to get help. And there is how it breaks down. So that's a, that's a breakdown of my eco footprint. We can see choose different scenarios. We can close that one. Can you reduce your ecological footprint? Let's have a look. Let's edit. Now we can go back and we can edit things to see how it changes. Now I want you to keep notice on the top left it says 3.7 and my pie. So when I click on my home, click on the house, then I can have a look. I can't change anything on my house, so that remained 3.7 Earths. Let's have a look at the detail information. Let's say if I used a lot more renewable energy, 20 to 20, 20 to 50%. And if I spend less electricity on my home, because we knew that the electricity really made a difference to my ecological footprint, the amount of global earths, the global hectares that I need, or the amount of planets that I need. So let's select 72 seems okay. And natural gas, let's leave that at 15. Now the cooling of the house, let's say that um, I don't use an air conditioner, which I don't. And the heater, let's say... I don't use my heater at all. I just put jerseys on and, and put an electric blanket and things like that. Now, if I have to increase the efficiency of my bulbs, let's say all of my housing is energy efficient, okay, you will see now that 3.7 planet Earths is now down to 2.5. So just by changing a few things on my electrical needs would have reduced. You can have a look there. Now, the food is, the shelter is, is reduced quite a lot. Now, we're going to go and have a look at the food. So, that's another way to get to the food. We click on the pie, and now we go directly back to the food. Let's say, let's say I'm a vegetarian, that I don't eat beef and lamb and poultry. I don't eat fish. I never eat pork. And looks like I'm a vegan, because I don't eat eggs and milk and all that neither. So, that's dropped down my planet is to 2.1 as well. And my food has now dropped considerably too. So that's looking, that's looking a lot better. Let's say that, um, let's have a look, airplane travel. So do I need to click? Yes, I click on the airplane and then the mobility comes up. Let's say I don't fly at all. So from 2.1 Earths down to 2 Earths. So, be, so because I fly once a year, that only adds 0.1. So that doesn't make a great big difference on my ecological footprint. If I cycle around a lot more, that also doesn't make any difference unless I drop the amount of kilometers in the car. Because if I go more on the bicycle, then I go less in the car. And because I'm on my ability, I have to change my car and my motorbike. So if I use my motorbike more, my car less, and uh, 6 to 10 liters, let's have a look. If I bought a more fuel-efficient car, in other words, if I sold my car and I bought another car that was more fuel-efficient, and my motorbike, I can't do much of my motorbike because it's only a 200cc. If I also have to say that very often that I share lift, so I'm looking out for people that want to share with me, that will also help reduce uh, my footprint. Now, I'm not going to change much on the bus, but let's say that I travel more by train instead of now, just look at that, 2.3. I've done a lot of savings in my car, but the train, if I increase just my rail travel, then I increase my footprint largely. So that looks like electronic railway uses a lot of electricity. So that will get added to my footprint. Now, I'm going to choose to reduce my footprint. I have chosen to reduce my footprint by 1.4 planet Earth down to 2.3. Now, it wasn't 2.0, but we're up to 2.3 by saying more train. And now you can see what I've done to accomplish. Okay, let's see what else we can do. We can, we can return to the quiz and we can have a look about under your ecological footprint, 
let's explore a few different scenarios. So now what's going to happen is we're going to click one of these boxes and then we'll see immediately how much it changes on my footprint. So you can see where to save and what things to change around your house. Now I would like to switch to solar. So solar dropped it from 2.3, let's have a look, 2.3, we install solar to 2.2. Now the reason for this is because we've said that we use a lot less electricity. If we had to keep the electricity up quite a lot and then install the solar, then it would reduce by a lot more. Okay, we've selected all of that. So basically you can go and play around with those scenarios and have a look how it changes. It's a live change. And now when we've finished, we can save the footprint for later. So we type in our email address and we type in our password so that we can come back to it at a later time. We can then do some more changes and we can even print. What it does, it emails to you now your, your result once you've done this. Once you've put your email address and your password, and you'll get your result emailed to you. As you all know, I live in South Africa and not Australia. So I'm now going to perform my actual ecological footprint using the same calculator. I remember when I did the calculation for the first time, I was horrified that my lifestyle, which I believe to be moderate and quite simple, was making such a huge impact on the delicate Earth's resources. This has made a huge difference in my life and the choices I continually make. Now that we've gone through the example of Australia, let me show you the South African one. Now you'll notice the difference between the South African one and the Australian one. With South Africa you can either choose English or Afrikaans. So I'm going to choose English for our example. You can see the screen, it already looks a lot different. So we're going to go straight on the food section and the food, I'm going to say that I eat cereals and vegetables and fruits quite often and you just select everything, the poultry, the beef, the lamb, the pork and the other red meat and then we can select how much fish we eat and we can say the eggs, the milk and the dairy. So once we've completed that, we can click on next down the bottom right to take us to the next screen. Now that was food and now we're on goods. So you can see compared to the Australian one, the Australian one there was above the line and below the line. There was the summarized and the detailed. And I mentioned to you you should do the detailed one to get more accurate footprinting. Now with South Africa this is just the summarized one. Now we're going to choose the shelter, which is basically the house that you live in, the amount of people in your house, how many rands you spend on electricity per month and um, how much you spend on my wood. I spend about uh, 15 rand per month on wood and LPG. Now we're going to go to mobility and the mobility this has all got to do with the vehicles and the trains and things like that. So I've got my own vehicle. I'll choose how much I travel by car, what type of car I've got and then how far I travel by bus and by train. I don't travel by bus and by train, so I'll select zero kilometers. And then we click on next. Now we can see that this is already done and it's 2.3 planets, so it's very similar to the one that I did in the Australian one. And we can see there below is, uh, we can again, we can put the question marks and now we can have a look that the average for the world is 1.8 and for South African I'm a little bit above South African so I need to reduce my footprint to get in line with the rest of South Africa. The rest of African countries are a lot smaller as well. To see where it compares, to support my lifestyle it takes 4.2 global hectares of earth and we can have a good close look at the energy. The energy is to store your carbon emissions the croplands is for growing crops and for livestock feed. The grazing land, nursery, this is all because I selected that I eat meat. So because I select I eat meat, the, the, the livestock has to go into croplands. Then the forest land is for the wood products, that's for my furniture and, and things like that. Okay, let's have a look at the which areas of my footprint are the largest. Now we can see that my food and my shelter takes up the most. 
and after that my mobility is the highest. So if I want to reduce my footprint, I need to work on my food, my shelter and my mobility. Okay, when we finished reading those, we can close that as well. Now, how do I change my footprint? I can explore now different scenarios. You see this is quite different to the Australian one. I can drag the green arrow to my target. So I can either increase my footprint by going up and it goes red, or I can reduce my footprint. So let's say I want to reduce my footprint by 25%, and then we can explore the scenarios to see if I can get my footprint back to that. Now I'm going to change a few things here to say to see how it will how it will affect my footprint. Now I've, I've said very often to cereal, so the red arrow actually went up a bit. Now when I say I don't eat meat, the red arrow goes down a bit. You see the red arrow in the top that actually moves live as I choose different selections. That'll change. Now when I say next, I go down to my new furniture and ongoing maintenance. Let's leave that. How many people in the household? Let's uh, have a look at my electricity. Let's say I reduce my electricity. You see the red arrow? It went down quite a bit. Now, let's see if I can do something on my mobility to reduce my ecological footprint. Let's say I drive a lot less in my car and I cycle a lot less. You see the, the red arrow went down quite a bit. Now, I've reduced from 4.2 global hectares to 3.5 if I implement those changes that I suggested that I would do. So this is sort of planning ahead to see how to reduce your footprint in the future. Sort of give yourself a few targets. Okay, and then we can click on Receive Newsletter if we want to receive the newsletter. You have to be very honest when answering those questions and filling in the information. It makes you think carefully and see how we really take so much for granted. Good luck with doing your calculations. We know that you will make the necessary changes in your life and plan for each thing you do in a totally different and more enlightened way. Each and every step each of us take starts making the difference. I think that all good Right-thing people in this country are sick and tired of being told that all good, right-thinking people in this country are fed up and being told that all good, right-thinking people in this country are fed up with being sick and tired. I'm certainly not, and I'm sick and tired of being told that I am. That's from Monty Python. <laughs> Until next time, take care and keep watching your footprint. Bye for now.